Good afternoon and welcome to uh, another short edition of Awake in the World. My name is Garen and I, I really wanted just to do this today because of all the amazing responses that we're starting to see out of the group. You know, and, and this, uh, this warms my heart. And so often uh, we get so engaged in, in the, the process that we allow it somehow to become a little too serious than it needs to be a lot of times. So I, I just want to have a, a little bit of fun with people today. And, and we're going we're, we're gonna to talk about a few uh, really interesting things that are dear to my heart. And uh, one of them, is, of course, is Rumi. And if you don't know who uh, Rumi is, it, it would benefit you to start looking into some of Rumi's works. Uh, Rumi is an absolutely amazing poet. Um, and, and I say is because to me, uh, what, what he is, is the same as, as what Christ is, is what we are, that, that Christ consciousness, that realized being. Mulana Jalaluddin Rumi was a Persian mystic, uh, a poet, and a practicing Islamic dervish. He was born in 1207 AD. His works span the globe now and have been translated into many different languages. I, I, I want to discuss some of my personal favorite short Rumi quotes and invite you to explore more because the wisdom of Rumi can apply to your, you, you'll be surprised how you'll hit upon one of his quotes and you'll go, that's me, right? So here's the first, and I, I picked this one on purpose, of course. <laughs> If you are irritated by every rub, honey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> how will your mirror be polished? You know, in this, Rumi speaks directly about ego and its propensity to be unhappy about anything it perceives as suffering. It is the perceived suffering of ego, of course, that starts the process. And if we can come to see our experiences uh, for what they truly are, a cloth to help clean our mirror, we can get through life a lot simpler. Profound words and, and, and deep meaning within a single sentence. Another beautiful Rumi uh, quote, each moment contains a hundred messages from God. You know, every minute of every day, creation speaks to us. And yeah, there, there's uh, one of our group members, and, and she has such a loving soul, uh, wrote a beautiful post. And, and yes, you know, um, our physical bodies, we must look after those. This is so true. And those are messages I've been receiving too, because I'm, uh, I'm guilty of diving into things right down to the bottom. You know, whenever I'm handed something, whenever I, I, I take something on, I engulf it completely. And in that, sometimes I am engulfed. And, and this is the truth of the messages that we receive every day that speak to us. These messages come to us very direct, i.e., whack, there's the flu for you. Take a break. Slow down. Pay attention to the vessel. The temple needs a little bit of work. Some of them are more subtle. A feeling we get as someone passes us. Or an inclination that we should perhaps touch base with someone. All, every day, in every way, through, through every piece of work, through every piece of literature, in each one, no matter how mundane it may appear, there is a message there for us. It's there when we look for it. You know, the, when the movie, um, The Matrix, first came out, I saw that movie and I walked out of there and, and the martial arts and all the action meant nothing to me. It was the stunning statement that they were so blatantly making. And I dragged friend after friend after friend to that movie for an entire week and was so frustrated that out of all of them, only one caught on. The rest of them were just entertained. As your consciousness comes up, those messages become less subtle, 
more direct, more in your face. And, and we get them earlier. We, we get them before the baseball bat has to be brought out. And, you know, that's the, the case I got to with this flu is, you know, the sea of consciousness, Mother Nature, she just had to grab that bat and go, okay, down you go, boy. <laughs> you know, Rumi is one voice uh, amongst the same multitude, but it is unique and special, as are each of ours. Each of you, each of us possess a unique gift. No gift is better than the next. Each gift has value to the whole. And, and you give your gifts out, even if you're unaware of it. The more you're aware, the, the, the more you're living in light and in joy and, and coming from a, a place of happiness from within for no reason at all, except that you choose to be happy. All of creation has spoken to guide us since the dawn of humanity. Never think that we're not loved, not fully watched over, not spoken to in every way. We just have to start looking for it. Start expecting it. That's what I said to my wife. I, I said, you know, I live in a constant state of faithful expectation that I will be shown the way in every way. And, and the rest I just don't worry about. I, I rest in the arms of my creator instead. It's not my life. That's a false concept. It never was my life. That which I am is life itself. Being a candle is not easy. In order to give light, one must burn. This is a good one. You know, we talk about that inner candle within ourselves. And, and what do we burn? We burn away all the false conceptions of self, all the limiting ideas about ourselves. Rumi strives to help us understand that in order to be the light, capital L-I-G-H-T, we have to set ourselves alight. This fire is the fire of purpose of our being. It is the passion within us that when ignited, we lose track of time and space. When we lose ourselves in our work because it is no longer work. We're not the, the doer and the doing. There is just the doing with our presence. You are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. You know, Christ spoke this same truth in a different way. Know ye not that ye are gods? We are the creator made manifest as avatars on this planet. This is the, 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 the truth of our being. Everything else on top of that is illusion. Start peeling away the illusion bit by bit. You're going to find this magnificent gem waiting for you. The wound is the place light enters you. And, you know, this is an interesting one because one might say, well, that would seem to not really make sense because we are light. But from the outside, circumstances, the, the environment we're in, are the very fabric of our existence will shine light into us to show us that there's some darkness there. And when we can accept and deal with the darkness, that darkness is transmuted into light and starts to become clear. And the light of our true being underneath, that gorgeous reflective mirror that we are, shines out. Um, I'm going to go on with a few other ones just to think about, okay? And uh, the, this is, uh, I, I, I could go on with Rumi all day. And, and again, this one's just kind of for fun, just for you to enjoy. And maybe take a few of these quotes for yourself, post them in a place you can see them. Add that to driving yourself more and more to focus your mind on seeking first the kingdom within. 
And remember, everything else will be added. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, and again, I apologize a little bit. The, the flu is still hanging on. My, my wife is still a little bit uh, too. And we're learning our lesson. We're, we're going to slow it down this weekend, take a little more rest. Silence is the language of God. All else is poor translation. You know, it's in the silence. It, it's in the space between. The silence contains everything and is not empty. It is, it is replete with the energy of all things. The, the womb, if you will. This universe is not outside of you. Look inside. Everything you want is already there. Again, profound wisdom. You know, it is our, the, the king of senses, as the Buddhists call it, our vision, would lead us to always look outside of ourselves. And it leads us to believe that we're resident somehow right behind our eyes. And of course, that's not the truth. The universe is inside of us, even from a totally mundane physical level, nothing that we experience can we experience without it being processed. And it's processed inside. The perceptions, the thoughts, as we've talked about, create our perception, our view of reality, and thus reality is. And we've talked about this one before. Every story is us. Very short, very concise, four words. It's all ego. All of these stories we share with each other. There's not one of us having the story. There are millions upon millions having similar stories. Billions having similar stories. These collective stories, uh, it is our job to grow these stories past the fear, past the guilt, past the pain, the wounds, the sadness, and into the light. Where our stories become stories of joy. Don't ever grieve. Anything you lose comes around in another form. This is another truth of life. And, and at a scientific level, even we can validate this because uh, energy is never destroyed. Its form is only changed. It's transmuted, but never destroyed. Becoming awake involves seeing our own confusion more clearly. You know, and, and uh, a lot of people will hear me speak and they'll say, well, you know, where does all this stuff come from? And, you know, it comes from within. There's still a partially confused being here, too. I am not out of ego. I still occasionally fall victim to unconsciousness. And that's all right. It's, it's not about some point to reach. It's a, it is about the journey. It, the destination is really no fun. <laughs> and that's why it's a never-ending journey. That's why it's always changing, always evolving, always growing, always dancing. Probably one of the uh, deepest ones that will hit people uh, the hardest uh, and the most valuable way we can end this is with this statement. And you, when will you begin the long journey to yourself? Profound words to think about. Uh, the, the journey within is, is fraught with the ego always trying to pull you back out. Because, of course, it doesn't want you getting down to that jewel because it thinks it means the end of it. That's not the case. Much love to you all. Have a wonderful day. And uh, as always, we will talk again soon. Namaste.